Hello everyone, welcome back. It is a beautiful day out here today. It's nice and sunny and it's actually been above freezing for the last couple days. So all our snow has been melting off. It's gonna be about 44 degrees today. And here in about a few, in three or four more days, it's just gonna keep on getting warmer. It's gonna be about 55 degrees here on Christmas. So all the snow is slowly melting off. And uh, today I didn't really wanna get out uh, uh, too far off the driveway and uh, tear up the um, You know like rut up the place or I was afraid maybe I'd get uh, stuck or something like that with all this snow melting so I decided that I would do um, Something that I needed to do for a long time and that is to cut down the old burning trees so uh, behind me you see there's a there's a burn pile back here and um, That is where an old house used to be. There's a big concrete pad there and this is where we burn a brush pile and every time we burn that brush pile there's this old tree um, catches fire a little bit and burns just a little bit more every time and one time when we were burning there's another old tree that's over that direction about 20 feet uh, 30 feet away and um, and it actually caught fire as well when we burnt this and we actually had that in one of our older videos on one of our homestead updates and I'll post that in the description below if you want to see that but um, this area behind me, I've got big plans for this area. I don't want this to be our burn pile no more. I want to use this concrete pad. I want to use it as like an equipment lay down area. And then I want to move the really big carport that's up front that I have the livestock trailer in. We used to have a camper in it. That tells you how big that carport is. And I want to move that over here and I want to put siding down the sides of it. And I would basically want to turn it into like a little barn and uh, store equipment in this area. So. Um, before I burn this burn pile, I want to get these these old burn up trees. I want to get them cut down and see if I can get them put on the pile. So I'm going to go ahead and start the chainsaw up and see if we can cut these up. So I don't know how well this is going to work. So the diameter of that tree right there, I don't know if you can tell. Probably the original diameter of that tree was probably somewhere close to four feet. That thing was a huge, uh, I believe it was a maple, it was just a huge old maple. And then the one over over there is probably close to a three foot diameter tree. So that's kind of pushing the limits of my 18 inch chainsaw. So um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to get it cut off enough that maybe, if anything, maybe I can take the tractor and break it off the rest of the way. We'll have to see how that goes. But the problem with these trees is there is was junk all over this property when we bought it. And the more that burns, the more that burns, the more metal that keeps exposing. Uh, so there was a ton of metal in the ground around that tree and I'm afraid there's actually metal inside the tree and uh, So I may, may tear up my chainsaw the chain. I may dent the chainsaw chain up and uh, I do have an extra chain But the chain I have on the chainsaw today is actually coming where the teeth some of the teeth are getting really small from sharpening So it's about to the end of the life on that chain anyway, so it's a great opportunity uh, If I'm gonna tear up a chain, I might as well tear up the one that's that's almost uh, used up anyway, so we'll go ahead and see if we can get this tree cut down
Well, I think I'm about three quarters of the way through cutting down that first tree and it is really doing a number on this chainsaw. It is dull already, so I don't know. Um, I think the ash and the charcoal of the tree where it's been burnt, I think that's kind of abrasive and I think that's dull in the chain. I think that's one problem. And then the other problem is that the wood, some of the wood uh, is still hard and some of the wood is kind of soft and uh, punky going rotten. And a lot of that is soaked up water. So um, it might have some ice that's formed in there, but, it, but it's basically wet and soggy and spongy. And it's really kind of clogging up the saw and really bogging the saw down as well. And it's just, um, it's just being a real pain to be able to cut through that. You'd think that a rotten tree, I'd be able to buzz right through it. But I think the combination of the charcoal mixed with this kind of spongy material that's kind of half frozen, um, I think that that's definitely uh, doing a number on this chainsaw. So I'm gonna go ahead, I think I'm gonna take it apart and see uh, how much stuff is clogged up in here and then go ahead and resharpen it and see if we can get this tree cut down. I'm almost there. I've got this, oh look at that. I've got this hook made up. I don't know if you can see this. And I've got this hook. It's like a pick. And I've filed that down real thin so it fits inside of the chainsaw. So I can clean that out. Works really good. Yep. So it's just oh, gunking up in the track making it run real bad maybe that soggy wood is mixing with the oil of the chain and i don't know i'm sure that having a bunch of water in here is not helping the chain any they may they may make a hook like this i don't know i ended up making my own i think it works really good the chainsaw blade has this hole on each side, um, so when you flip the bar over, it still works, but that's where the oil goes into the track. And um, cleaning this track out definitely gonna help, help the oil be able to get in there and lubricate the chain, but I think, I think that this being so wet and soft wood, this is gonna just keep clogging up. I think my sprocket back here that, that runs the chain, there's a sprocket back under here. That looks like that's getting worn out. I think I'm going to have to do some work on this chainsaw, especially after chairing this or cutting this tree down. This might be a good excuse for me to just go get a new chainsaw. That'd be pretty awesome. I have a hard time justifying some purchases. I, uh, Try to not spend a lot of money if I can't, if I don't have to. So I about have to justify buying something. I think that uh, in this case, taking a chain, having a backup chainsaw is a pretty good excuse to get another one. So this chainsaw I've had for golly, 10 years probably at least, and it's a Husqvarna 350. It's been a pretty good chainsaw. It's got a little catch in it. I think that sprocket, the sprocket that drives the chain definitely needs replaced. Definitely causing it to catch. It's starting to get a a groove worn through it pretty good in that gear.
Well, I'm still having problem with the chainsaw. There's the, the sprocket that's on the inside that runs the chain. It actually has a, a really deep groove in it to the point where it doesn't want to run the chain if it's in that groove. Um, and if it goes outside of that groove, the chain gets like really tight and it wants to bind up. So I'm um, pretty much at a stopping point of what I can do with my chainsaw. So I've got most of this tree actually cut down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can move um, these big pieces of the trunk. See if we can get them put on the burn pile. And uh, hopefully here in a few weeks, we're gonna finally burn this pile. But uh, uh, may have to get the tractor out and a chain or something to drag that one around. It's still a pretty good size. So see if I can get these moved. Well, it's too bad the chainsaw ended up breaking on me today because I really wanted to be able to get this, this tree back here cut down as well. So this is the second burnt tree that we have. And this tree was pretty much dead when we bought the property back in 2015. And sh shortly after we bought the property, probably within six months or so, the tree ended up falling down and it crushed the lean-to back here and it took off kind of the last section of the lean-to where we have the firewood back there. And this thing has been an eyesore ever since, and especially the last two years. Ever since it caught fire and it's sitting here like all burnt and black, it definitely is an eyesore. And I've been needing to get it cut down. It's just one of those things I've been putting off. And so hopefully we'll get it cut down soon and uh, get it put over here on the pile because I'd like to also get that burn pile burnt. Uh, so the chainsaw will definitely need to try to get it fixed, but I really want to get I want to get a backup chainsaw. I want to get another chainsaw. And that chainsaw that I have has been a good chainsaw. It's a 50cc chainsaw. It's got an 18-inch bar. And when I go and get another chainsaw, I want to I want to upgrade. I want to get bigger. So I want to. I'm shooting for a chainsaw with a 25-inch bar. That way I can really tackle some big trees with that. And um, so definitely want to get one big enough that can handle that big of a bar. Now, even though the Husqvarna has been a good chainsaw, I'm probably going to actually buy a steel chainsaw. Um, I have a steel weed eater, weed eater that I've been really happy with and you, that's just what you're going to find around my area. You're not going to find Husqvarna dealerships or any, 
uh, a lot of those around. You're n normally going to find only Husqvarna probably at Lowe's or something. But uh, there's definitely plenty of steel dealerships around here, so there's probably plenty of a selection so I can go find the right chainsaw that I want. So hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, soon we'll come back and, and we'll be burning the pile. I'll have the chainsaw running again and we'll be back to collecting firewood. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.